G'day Year 7 Mathematicians and welcome to another week of lessons. We've got three PowerPoints to go through this week, so make sure you work your way through all those three and the appropriate Hegarty tasks. So today's, if you can just draw a line under previous work, and today's title is Angles on a Straight Line and at a Point, and then pop the date on, and your Do Now task is written on the screen for you to do. Okay, so for those that had go now at the do now task, the answers are appearing here for you now. That's the sort of thing we're looking for, the quick sketch there, and then a description of what the appropriate angles are. I'll put all of the angles there, but I'll see you were only asked for four of them. So today we're going to be able to calculate angles on a straight line, be able to calculate angles at a point, and then finally understand the equality of vertically opposite angles. Okay, so we'll take these one at a time here and get our way through. Quite a lot of these we have touched on in previous lessons, so should be a little bit more familiar. What do we know about angles on a straight line? And this is you're going to need to write down with that diagram, angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so there's two angles on there, one's 30, one's 150, and they will always make 180 degrees together. So we need a few examples, and again, I would like you to copy these into your exercise book as they appear on the screen for you, please. So we know angles X plus Y equals 180 degrees, because that is angles on a straight line. So say we knew one of these angles was 70, Y plus 70 must equal 180 degrees. So you can do 180 minus 70, so angle Y would be 110 degrees. Okay. Doesn't matter where this line is, we've tilted it onto its side here, but again, 35 plus x will equal 180 degrees. So you can do 180 minus 35, so angle x would be the remainder there, 145 degrees. What I would like you to do, there's going to be a series of quick fire ones, I think I've put uh, four or five of these down. As they appear on the screen, you can draw a very quick sketch of them in your book. They do not need to be exactly 47 degrees. Just look like that and clearly annotate a diagram with 47 degrees. You're going to work out the missing angle. So you'll need to pause when appropriate to put the answers down for me. So for this first one, X is 133 degrees. Y is 66. A 104, B, 98. So on all of those, I thought there was one more there, that was why there's the odd pause. Um, they should always, 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 angles on a straight line will add up to be 180 degrees. So there's eight more. Have a careful attention there on number eight as there's three, line, three angles in total, but still the same rule will apply. They will add it to be 180. So if you can pause the video there and have a go at those eight for me. Okay, answers for these ones. I've just missed off the degree sign, but obviously you'll be putting those on when you answer these in your books for me. Next batch of eight, getting slightly trickier here, because there's a lot more angles involved. Still, same principle, they will all add up to be 180. You might just have to do a few more calculations here. And answers for these ones. Okay, so let's have a look at a diagram here then. We're told CD and EF are straight lines. And we're going to write expressions for the size of any missing angles. Okay, so we don't know the exact angle by, by any means whatsoever, but we can write down how we would work them out. So use the correct three letter and geometric notation where appropriate to figure out the missing angles. Okay, so I'd just like you to have a go, see how many you could write down, and then I'll show you in a moment some of the examples that I have done for you. So on these, I was looking at the sort of thing we were doing was angle COG. We know that those on a straight line there, angle Y 
angle COG and angle X must equal 180. So COG would be 180 minus X and minus Y. Again, we don't know what the figs are for X and Y, but that doesn't matter. That's what we can leave it as. Angle FOD. Again, look where you've got the straight line there of CD. Those angles on there must add up to be 180. So 180 minus whatever X is, minus whatever we may have worked out for COG, would leave what FOD is. And then angle DOE, that's on, again, the straight line CD, so Y plus CO, uh, sorry, Y plus DOE must equal 180. So 180 minus Y would leave us angle DOE. Okay, next, and this is the big one, the other big point of the lesson that you're going to need to copy down into your exercise book and always remember, angles at a point, they will always add up to be 360 degrees, much like when we looked at a compass, a full circle, it's always 360 degrees. So all the angles around a point will add up to be 360 degrees. So, Example one, find angle A. All those four angles together, 85 plus 80 plus 75 plus A must equal 360. So to work it out what A is, you will do 360 minus all the ones we do know. So 85 plus 75 plus 80, that's 240. 360 minus 240, so angle A is 120 degrees. Okay, and again on these, when you're given diagrams, perhaps in a test and things like that, it will tell you if you need to measure it. Do not measure these. You're working something out, so you're going to need to show working. Don't put your protractor on there. These are not drawn accurately. Another example, find angle X. So again, all those four angles on the screen must add up to be 360. We've got a right angle as 90. So 360, and then we're going to minus off whatever 90 plus 100 plus 105 is equal to, that's 295, 360 minus 295, X is 65 degrees. Okay, there's some examples on the screen for you, if you can pause there, and there are 12 to work out where you're looking for the angle X on all of those. Okay, so answers are appearing now. So if you could mark your work as usual, please, and any corrections, just write them alongside so you've got something to refer back to. Okay, now this is a particularly difficult question, and on the next slide I will show you what the drawing would look like, but this brings a lot of the things we've done together. So, four line segments are drawn from a point O. They are OA, OB, OC and OD. A, B, C, D are points drawn clockwise in order around O. And then it tells you the angles of three of them and then asks you to work out the size of the angle A, O, D. And there are four possible answers there. Obviously, just one of those is correct. So you will need to draw that diagram and then work out again, rather than you're not going to be measuring, you're going to work out what that angle would be. Okay, massive world on Tony on who's got that. I think the answer is 119 degrees, and on this next slide we'll show how to create that diagram using the information that's given to us. So, four line segments from a point O. There's our point O. Let's draw a line. That's our line segment OA. I've just drawn that randomly. It could be anywhere on the page as long as it comes from O. A, B, C, D are drawn clockwise, so B must come next. There's B. And we're told angle OAB is 54 degrees, but we'll do that in a moment. We'll add on A, B, C, D. And now angle o, A, O, B is 54. Let's mark that up. B, O, C is 106. This is when you have to be very careful on. B, O, D is 187. That goes all the way around from B to D there. B, O, D is 187. What is the size of angle AOD? That's the bit we're looking for there with the question mark. So angles around the point will add up to be 360 degrees. So we've got AOB is 54. Then all the way around from B to D is 
187, and then whatever's left there is going to be what AOD is. That's 360 minus 54 minus 187 gives you 119 degrees there for AOD. Now, let's get rid of some numbers and look at some algebra. So, algebra throws people straight away, but let's always remember our golden rule. Angles on a straight line must add up to be 180 degrees. So 3x plus x must equal 180. 3x plus x is 4x. So 180 divided by 4 will get your x, which is 45. So angle x is 45 degrees. 3x, 3 times x is 45 times 3 is 135. Double check, 135 plus 45, 180 degrees. Sorry if you can hear some beeping in the background. I think my washing has just finished, so there's my job after this. So, here's another one then. Calculate the value of x. So, first thing you'll be thinking is, we've got angles around a point here. All of those angles together must equal 360 degrees. So then you'll simplify your terms. So, x plus 4x plus 45 is 360. x plus 4x is 5x. So 5x plus 45 is 360. If we take the 45 away from both sides, 5x equals 315. To get just what 1x is, we've got five lots of it, we'll need to divide by 5. 315 divided by 5, x equals 63. So then you could work out all the angles there. Obviously the top one there, x equals 63, then there's 45. Then 4x is 4 times 63, which is 252 degrees. Add them all together, and you can confirm that they equal 360. Okay, And then you know you've got that correct. So I would like you to have a go at the ones on the screen there. And you're going to work out what x is in each of those, and then obviously what that angle makes for those four there. So if you can pause the video and have a go at those for me. Okay, so in that one, we have got x equals 93. So that angle there would be 186 degrees there where it says 2x. Next one, x is 70. So that angle 3x would be 210 degrees. Those now must add up to be 180 degrees on a straight line. So x is 54 and the angle 2x would be 108 degrees. And then the bottom right one, once again, they must add up to be 180 degrees. So x is 27. And then the 3x angle there would be three lots of that, which would be 81 degrees. So this looks very, very challenging here. And this is our hook for this final part of the lesson here. Work out the value of x and y. So we don't quite know enough information yet, but after a few slides, you're going to have another go at that diagram. So vertically opposite angles. These are angles are formed when two straight lines intersect. So that's when they cross. Angles A and C are vertically opposite. And angles B and D are vertically opposite. Vertically opposite angles are equal. So therefore, A is equal to C and B is equal to D. Okay, you're going to need to write that down exactly as it appears with the diagram into your exercise books for me, please. So using that information, have a little look to think which of these diagrams do not show vertically opposite angles. Okay. Have a think again at that definition when two straight lines intersect. And you can then hopefully see from these cross diagrams here that none of these show vertically opposite angles because they do not fulfill that criteria. We're forming two straight lines intersect in that fashion. So these do now show vertically opposite angles. And I would like you to use letter notation to describe the angle that is vertically opposite to the angle already indicated by an arc. So that arc, that's the shaded region there to show the angle which ones on these show vertically opposite angles. And again, remember your three letter notation for angles. So on this first one, 
There are two sort of answers here. It's the same angle, but two ways to write it. So we've got L N K, or you could write as K N L. Remember that middle letter is the one where we're looking at for it. Top right one. So angle V C W is the same as X C Z or Z C X. It's that whole part there because it's vertically opposite that. And then on the last one, we should be having U O T or T O U as our vertically opposite to Q O R. So using that information, there are six diagrams there. You're going to need to copy the diagrams and label the value of the vertically opposite angles. And then using your knowledge from earlier about angles around a point, adding up to 360 degrees, can you label every single angle on those diagrams. So pause that and have a go for me, please. Okay, so we should get the answers of these. All the angles are appearing there if you could mark your work for me. Hopefully you got all of the vertical opposite angles and for a lot of you, you'd then be able to work out every single angle on all of the diagrams there for me. Now, as promised, we're gonna to return to the hook and I will be incredibly happy if people have been able to solve this one for me. So using your knowledge of vertically opposite angles, angles around a point adding up to be 360 degrees, and then perhaps angles on a straight line as well, adding up to be 180 degrees. See if you can solve all of those angles for me and I'll put up the answers in a moment. Okay, so this is the sort of way I worked it out. So we know the 42 degrees is vertically opposite the angle that's labeled 2x minus 12. So 42 must equal 2x minus 12. Using some algebra and rearranging, we'll get x equals 27 degrees. Okay. 2 times 27 is 54, minus 12 is 42, so we know those two are correct. Now to work out y, we know all of the angles on that whole thing together would equal 360. But let's add up the angles we do have so far. So we've got 2x minus 12. Then the angle next to it is plus 12 degrees. Then vertically opposite that 12 will be another 12. And then we've got one that's already labeled as 42. So adding those four angles together is 108 degrees. Okay. So the remainder, everything that's left, must be 360 minus 108 is 252 degrees. Looking at Y and going vertically opposite that would be exactly the same angle. So those two must equal the same, which is 360 minus the 108 we've already got, 252, and then divide that by two, Y is 126 degrees. 126 degrees. Now, there is another way you could have worked out what y is. If you look at the straight line there that y makes as it curves round, we've got y plus 2x minus 12 plus 12 must equal 180 because that's angles on a straight line. We've said 2x minus 12 is 42 degrees. It's vertically opposite the 42. So 42 plus 12 is 54. 180 minus 54 gives you 126 degrees. There's a lot of different ways to uh, kind of work out these questions, but they will all have exactly the same answers no matter how you do that. So massive well done to anyone who's got that correct. Now that does conclude the end of the lesson. So as I say, there are two more and we can learn a few more angle facts. We can look at angles in triangles and some quadrilaterals before moving on to polygons and a few more complex angle problems later in the week. Okay, so well done for today, and I will catch up with you um, in the next day or two for lesson two then. So look after yourselves then, year seven.